what is up guys drew henley upstate 208 and uh we're finishing up after a strong summer of surfing fishing camping all of the things that come this summer dirt biking you betcha Uh, it is early September right now, and it's uh, 72 degrees out. Um, I think we're gonna hit like 90 today, so summer is not quite over yet. However, I have this little lady on my mind right here. Yeah, sled season. It's coming. Get ready. La Nin Ya. That's what they say. They just officially announced it on the local news station that we are having an La Nina system, which means above average moisture. Uh, so whenever you're a winter sports person, that's the stuff you wanna hear. So uh, just been tinkering on things. I got all excited because I saw Chris Barant riding his snowmobile around and uh, they're getting snow down in Colorado and Wyoming right now and so it's just uh, it just lets you know that it's getting close so a couple of things I'm doing to my sled um, that I was just gonna show you guys talk about a little bit and just kind of checking in and getting ready for an amazing winter headed our way finished up last snowmobile season uh, real strong we got a lot of riding in <laughs> And uh, as always, I broke some stuff. Uh, not obviously uh, extremely pertinent stuff. It was stuff I could still ride with and just kind of deal with and just kind of put it on the back burner towards the end of the season. Uh, that being said, uh, a couple of those things were my kill switch. Uh, if you have a new Gen 4 Skidoo, uh, you may have encountered this. If you haven't yet, you may uh the kill switch button itself likes to fall off when you roll the sled over it gets caught on trees something like that disappears and it's just something you don't notice until you go to use it and then by that point it's uh anyone's guess where it may be so uh lost the kill switch i was just using my tether uh so that being said uh after everything i've seen buddies that i have that have screwed around with this kill switch um, I didn't want to use it on top of how many of you have been in a situation where you're in the trees in the you know terrain where you really need to be moving forward and you accidentally hit your kill switch boom done you're stuck and it's just always super annoying so that being said I went to this guy right here which is the uh, fly racing the pictures not super bright see it right there a little bit the fly racing uh, billet aluminum one and it's just a push and hold button like on your dirt bikes so um, I didn't even look at what the um, the skidoo one costs because I'm sure it's stupid uh, so anyhow I bought that guy on um, online Dennis Kirk or somewhere for like 38 bucks. So I know there's a lot of like billet products out there, different uh, brands that make it, um, but it's solid aluminum, super durable, and I'm not gonna have that problem of hitting my kill switch accidentally when I don't want it. Uh, another thing that is supposed to be showing up today is a lower riser, which I know has gotten a lot of attention uh, back in the day. It was always like, oh, you want these risers high. Uh, my Skidoo, is a 2018 Summit, uh, and these came, I believe it's a six and a half inch uh, riser on this, so it's not bad. Um, I do notice that it is kind of a little bit too much for me when I'm side hilling like on steep, steep stuff. When I'm on uh, the side hill action going on, um, I just feel like those handlebars are starting to get like up, you know, to where it's just a weird position. So uh, I'm uh, just about like six foot one 
and I'm kind of lanky as far as like meat hook arms. And so uh, I'm going to go to a four and a half inch riser. So I'm just dropping it like two inches and I think it's going to be game changer um, as far as just control and just not having those handlebars up so high. Uh, I got rid of my mountain bar. Okay guys, we're back. It's later in the day now. Um, I ran out of battery uh, earlier, so I just kind of went on organizing things around here. But um, I think where I left off is that I shortened up my bar riser on my sled and I think I'm going to be real happy about it. So um, I've been seeing that kind of trend in the last uh, couple years, it seems like. And so I finally just went for it. And I think it's going to be real nice. It's, uh, I went from six and a half, which is the stock riser on the, uh, 857 on it to a four and a half. So puts those bars down much lower, or at least a couple inches, two and a half, two inches lower, I guess. And I think it's gonna be sweet just standing on it and feeling it. So uh new kill switch, new um Took the mountain bar off because that thing's just stupid looking and I never use it anyhow. Other than when I'm like flipping the machine over sometimes. That was one thing where I'm like, oh, that's the only time I actually kind of like that is when you're reaching down in the snow to grab that bar and kind of flip it over. Uh, but I'll figure something else out. Um, and the, so kill switch, riser, got rid of the mountain bar and put a pad on it and uh, I dig it. So... So that thing is pretty dialed in. I've got to uh, tension up the, I need to tighten up the track a little bit. It's got a little, sw it's got a little sag in it. And I know last year, right towards the end of the season when I was getting like loaded up um, and on the gas a lot, it was, it skipped a little bit off of the drive and uh, it's a terrible sound and just not something that you want to do. So uh, I took my, primary uh, clutch off the other day and just cleaned it up really good um, I didn't pull anything apart everything looks like it's fine um, but just pulled it off uh, cleaned everything up that I could get to very well and got that dialed in as well as the secondary um, just kind of visually inspected all that I'm gonna drop the chain case oil and put fresh oil in, tension that up, make sure that it's good, and that sled is probably dialed in and ready to go. Um, so, that being said, I've got this guy right here, which is a 04 uh, Rev, and this was, uh, it's an 03 or an 04, I honestly can't even remember right now, but um, this was the first year of the rev chassis and this was my second sled that i ever owned but my first real sled that i rode in the mountains and started getting my uh my feelers out there so it's a 151 track um 800 and it is redneck modified a little bit i chopped the seat way down on it because as you guys remember the seat came back to like well, it actually like went back and over that gas can. So it was just ridiculously huge and in the way. And um, so this is my extra sled now, wife sled, buddy sled, um, all of those things. And it does not get ridden a whole lot, but I will say that um, the old school revs uh, are not a bad sled to get you into the game. Um, obviously I, this is really about as inexpensive as you can get and still get that upright, like ergonomic, uh, body style on a sled. So I like these sleds. They're difficult to ride when you ride a, one of the newer machines. Um, 
and the tracks are not as long, they're underpowered, but I will say starting on the sled and working through some more technical terrain in the mountains uh, was extremely helpful when I stepped up to the 850 um, Gen 4. It was like night and day, and I was able to start going places that I just didn't think I had the ability to go. Um, so that being said, uh, I still ride the sled. <laughs> I've got um, I've got the SLP uh, Powder Pro skis on it, um, and that's it really. Other than other some like other redneck modifying stuff. So the skis on these things were super janky. Um, it was like if you're familiar with these, when you were on the sled looking down at the skis, it was almost like you had, like looking at your sh someone that had their shoes on the wrong feet it was super weird they did it for i think like one or two years where the ski had like a weird weird f i don't know it was just weird and uh they sucked so i will say that putting those skis on uh definitely helps with just navigating mountain terrain so it's been a good sled. Um, I smashed the bumper on it and broke it, which if anyone is familiar with these things, that happens. Uh, it's the second time I've done it. And honestly, I cut out and um, put it on its side on a downhill and it just started like pushing snow, like bulldozing it. And I kind of just like bulldozed into a snowbank and it snapped that front bumper. So it's definitely a weak spot. Um, I will say like, all of this framework in here is kind of tweaked and bent and it's just pretty chintzy. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It's easy to kind of bend it back and manipulate things to get it on there. So that's what we're doing, getting it dialed in. I haven't fired this thing up yet this year. So the uh, UPS, FedEx, somebody it's supposed to be dropping off a new bumper today, so I kind of got everything prepped and cleaned it. Um, clutch is cleaned on this thing, and just pretty much, it's all I do, is just dump gas and oil in it and pull on the cord and let her rip and keep it clean, change the chain, chain case oil, make sure things are tensioned up right, and um, she's just a runner, so that's good. Bumper just showed up from UPS, so better late than never got a freshie here so now it's just a matter of uh, goofing around with this thing getting her slapped on so I think I'll time-lapse that okay I remember this now and it's a pickle things are tweaked which make it way more difficult so here's the deal because there's multiple there's multiple spots so like this fender well has to tuck up into the bottom of the bumper you can see right here I'm like gapped out so it's all it's all wanky wonky wanky wonky and so you just got to flex on things just gotta be flexing, flex it out, get everything tweaked in. So it's a pickle. It's gonna take me a bit yet still to gonna get. I got one bolt in. I just gotta keep flexing on things. <clears throat> Not gonna lie, this is one of those things that's like a really simple task in theory, but it's just a pain in my butt. To get it done so I got these two bolts in I got these two front bolts in there's another one right back here that's pretty close to lined up and then we got this freaking guy it's about it's about an inch away from being where it needs to be See that, there you go. Okay, so this is my bumper hole. 
that's where it needs to go. And it's freaking hard. And I think what I'm gonna do, I just stopped to uh, go eat a little dinner. The uh, wifey went and got a little tomato street and it was good. And while I was sitting there chimp chimp chomping away on my food, I thought, why don't I get a ratchet strap and put it around this. I'm gonna get a ratchet strap, put it around here, and go up here around the frame, and ratchet it down. Bada bing, bada boom. Got it. While talking on the phone. So sometimes I think I just, just kinda gotta not try so hard. It is on. Great, nothing snapped apart when I let go. It's great, it's great news. Bye. It's just jackhammering and stuff. And Sledgehammering going stuff. To get you. He's yeah. a lot of help, as you can tell. Okay, it's time to put this bee back together.